Your Samsung Galaxy S24 device can do so much. Sometimes it's actually really overwhelming where to start. This is a follow-up video to my previous 15 most requested tips and tricks video, which you can find in the cards uh, in the top right-hand corner of this video. This time I've jammed in another 10 tips, some of which uh, I might just flesh out in full videos if you want that, uh, of course, because I think that some of these can actually be entire videos of their own. All time codes are in the description below so that you can skip to the right tip trick that you're looking for, especially if you're gonna refer to something at a later stage. Anyway, let's get into our first tip. Your Samsung Galaxy has a secret options menu. This is used to unlock features that are still being tested or if you know what you're doing, you can push your phone to do some extra things that standard system won't let you. So to access it, just swipe down and go to settings, about phone, and then software information. Here you're gonna find something called a uh, build number. Tap that eight times and then your developer options menu will appear at the bottom of the settings page. Very easy. Again, just a personal recommendation here, just a note, don't do this unless you really know what you wanna do. It's like opening up the hood of the car. You are gonna want it to get it into the engine for a specific reason, you know what I mean? You've got a secret folder on your Galaxy device that you can only access through a password or some biometrics, which is really cool. Here you can store sensitive images and business documents for your eyes only and even apps. To activate it, swipe down on your home screen and you should see a secure folder from the list of tiles uh, there. But if it's not there, you can add it by tapping the pencil icon in the top right hand corner of the screen and selecting it in the available buttons. It'll now be accessible to you so you can activate or deactivate it. It's a toggle. Tapping on the button is going to activate it so that you can essentially hide or reveal it in your system apps. So if you don't want it, you toggle it off. If you do want it to be discovered, you toggle it on. Once it's activated, just search for it like you would any app ordinarily on your phone. If it's the first time that you're using the secure folder, you're gonna have to set it up a little bit and then you're gonna have to set up that pin. It's not the same pin that you use necessarily with your phone. And you can even use your biometrics to unlock it if you want to, which is, which is great. The secure folder works like a separate instance of your phone. So any apps that you add into the folder will be separate from the main apps on your phone. It's not like it's removing it from your system and then adding it to the folder. It's a separate instance of that app. It's just a little bit more secure. If you install apps here from the Play Store, they're only going to appear here and not on your phone. So if you install it directly through the Play Store on your, uh, in your secure folder, it's not going to appear in your main phone. That's how you put secret apps there. And if you add an existing app from your phone, it's gonna create a second instance of that app. So depending on what you're doing, you can hide certain apps in here, like your banking apps, for instance, for extra security, so they're just not searchable or discoverable inside your main phone. And any media in this gallery or in this notes app, for instance, if you're taking notes, won't appear in your main phone's gallery or notes. So you won't be able to search it there. You can even change the appearance of the app icon and name for even more security. So just make it like pink and then just replace the logo and you know, no one will ever know. The downside of the secure folder is that it can't be backed up anymore, which is a feature that they removed for some reason. I wish they'd kept it. I don't know why they did that, but that means if you set up a new secure folder on another phone, you're gonna have to do it from scratch. For now anyway. You can mirror your phone on your Samsung TV with a feature called Smart View. Make sure that your phone and your TV are on the same Wi-Fi network or the internet network that you're on. Then swipe down and select Smart View. If your TV or monitor is available, then you're gonna be able to see it in that drop-down list once you've switched on Smart View. Select your TV or monitor that you wanna to cast to. You might be asked for a code or to accept it on the TV and then boom, now you're gonna be able to see your phone mirrored like you have in your hand on your TV. A side note here is that you can also Chromecast uh, certain apps to your screen uh, if that supports it. Like for instance, if you've got YouTube and your TV supports Chromecast, you're able to like find that, but that's usually in a specific player on a video that you can press that button and it will discover any Chromecastable, Chromecast compatible uh, devices in your house. The side buttons on your Samsung Galaxy device are actually used these days to access Bigsby, your emergency services, or the camera settings if you double tap it generally. So how do you switch off your phone like you would in the old days? Because we don't do that. That power button doesn't function as a power button by default anymore. Well, it turns out it's actually really simple. You swipe down on the main home screen twice. Swipe, swipe. Once to reveal the drawer and the second one to expand the drawer. 
You can also do this, by the way, uh, with a two finger swipe on the homepage as well so that you can avoid that second swipe. You're going to see at the top of the screen a power button and from here, that's the power button that you can use to switch off your phone or restart it. Simple, right? Not many people know this, but you can call emergency services by tapping the side button five times simultaneously, which can be vital if you're in a pinch or in a situation where you need to let people know that there's a problem. Even if you did know this, not many people know that you can actually change the emergency number that's associated with your device. So to do this, all you need to do is swipe down on the home screen to reveal the settings cog. Once you're in settings, navigate to the safety and emergency, and then to emergency SOS. You can now change your emergency number to call and choose to send an SOS to emergency contact, which I highly recommend doing. So you can just scatter the need for help immediately, especially with family members that are uh, on uh, smart things with you and can find you really easily with a shared location. You can choose those contacts that you wanna add in the main safety and emergency settings menu. Did you know there's a way to keep your phone powered on while not charging your phone with a cable and continuously play games while the cable's in there without affecting your battery? It's called battery bypass. So to do this, while you're playing in a game, open up the game launcher. At the bottom of the screen, there's a more hamburger menu. Tap on that one. Then head over to game booster settings where you'll find the pause USB power delivery setting. The great thing about this setting is that once you've finished gaming, you've closed your game or you disconnect the charging cable, the feature will automatically turn off so you don't forget about it. So you don't put your phone on charge later and it doesn't actually charge. It just keeps it for that session. Do you ever put your phone on silent only to forget to switch it back on ringtone and then you miss like an important phone call because, you know, life gets in the way? Well, I think we've all been there. I've been there. I was there this weekend. But did you know that on your Samsung Galaxy device, you can set your phone to mute temporarily? Swipe down on your home settings screen to reveal the sound settings button. Hold your finger down on it to open up more settings. Here, you can now toggle a temporary mute and choose the duration that you want your phone to be muted for. Some of these things are just like right there, super neat. Did you know that you can change the brightness of your torch on your Samsung Galaxy device? Well, this is how you do it. Swipe down from the top of your screen to reveal the notification drawer. Then hold down the torch button instead of tapping it. The slider will open up where you can adjust the brightness of the torch so that you're not just blinding people with using it or wasting battery by having it on the brightest setting. Very cool. If you're having trouble connecting to things like the Samsung Smart Tag 2 or your phone is struggling to locate it, this is something actually a lot of people have commented on my Smart Samsung Smart Tag 2 review video about, so hopefully this is going to address this for you. You're going to have to make sure that you've got something called UWB or Ultra Wide Band Activated. This is also the technology used for using your phone to unlock your car with Samsung Pass if your car supports it. So to turn it on, go to your settings, connections, and from here, you can toggle ultra wideband if your Galaxy device supports it. Did you know that you can change the size of your app's icons on your home screen? It's super easy. All you have to do is hold down your finger anywhere on your wallpaper. The settings to change your wallpaper will pop up. Then you can tap on the cog in the bottom right-hand corner of the screen. This is gonna open up the home screen settings. Here you can change the home screen grid size, the app screen grid, and the folder grid, which all will adjust the app icon size to fit your specific grid request. So they all just fit on the screen. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you found this video helpful at all, uh, give this video a like. It really helps me and the channel and can help others that could use this information find this video easily. And also check out this video on the screen that's popping up right now. YouTube wants you to watch it. I assume it's gonna be very helpful to you because they know everything about us these days. Uh, I'll see you in another video.